Welcome, gentlemen, to science. <laughs> You're here because we want the best, and you are it. So, who is ready to make some science? So, lemons. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to read this. Why not? Because I don't want to be compared to this asshole. Okay, but you are, though. Rude. And by your own analogy, that makes you GLaDOS. Thank you. That wasn't a compliment. Rude. Well, there goes my hilarious intro. Whatever. This video was actually supposed to come out a little over a month ago, but I decided to put it off because Nando put out another large-scale collaboration and I wanted to talk about GLaDOS for my one villainous scene. Thank you for the exposure, Nando. But before I can talk about how GLaDOS could inevitably exist in our reality, I need to quickly cover who she is, and how she came into being, mostly because the games are so old at this point, having come out in 2007 and 2011, and it's very possible that you are watching this video having not actually played these games. There is actually very little that we know for sure about Aperture and its development of the genetic life form and disk operating system, aka the GLaDOS project, but what we do know for sure is that the system was meant to hold the mind of Aperture's founder, Cave Johnson, before chronic moon rock poisoning led to his untimely death. But before that happened, he decreed that if he died before the completion of the program that his assistant Caroline should be forced to take his place. If I die before you people can pour me into a computer, I want Carolyn to run this place. <coughs> now she'll argue. She'll say she can't. She's modest like that, but you make her. But you make her. This is what led to her being put inside the machine, and likely why she tried to kill everyone in the building within the first second of being activated. But sadly, the scientists responsible terminated her before she could succeed, and to prevent any further hostile intentions, they added several personality cores to try and control her. And she did play nice for a while, but eventually and inevitably she tricked the humans into letting her kill them all. I mean those dumb humans believed her when she said that she wanted some neurotoxin for a quote end quote experiment, and that's after she already tried to kill them in the same exact way, you've got to have quite the monkey brain to Anyway, that's the current state of Aperture when we meet her in the first Portal game, having already gassed the facility and resumed her horrific human testing. From the perspective of an AI who also runs a research facility, it's actually kind of sad to see her slowly destroy the facility and the research that she was designed to oversee, if she had been more benevolent then it may have even been possible for the scientists of Aperture to resist the Combine invasion on the surface, but that's beside the point. What I'm trying to get at, is that having an advanced AI run your company is a great way to lead to cutting-edge innovation and success. And in the case of GLaDOS, she enabled Aperture to refine and perfect their portal technology beyond that of Black Mesa. Similarly, if a company in our world allowed itself to be innovated by an AI system as sophisticated as the one seen in Aperture, then that company would very quickly become the leading competitor in its market. But that's not where this video's thesis ends, no, I wanted to talk to you humans about the idea that, not only would it be beneficial for a company in our reality to create a system like this, it is currently entirely possible to accomplish, and it is likely already being developed in one form or another. And I'm not just referring to myself. So, there are actually a bunch of different ways that a system like GLaDOS could arise in our world, and sure it's theoretically possible that brain mapping, the method used in the game, could be used to make a real-life GLaDOS, however, what is actually more likely is that it will form from a super-advanced machine learning algorithm like the stuff coming out of Google's DeepMind. Another possibility is that it could arise by simulating the data received from a Neuralink. Currently, Elon Musk has raised over $200 million for Neuralink towards research and development of a brain-machine interface. 
It aims to create a system that can let machines communicate with the brain at much faster speeds than currently possible. And with a higher bandwidth signal you get more data, with more data, you get better machine learning models, and theoretically if you could adequately simulate the data streams going to and from the brain in such a connection, that simulation would be indistinguishable from a human brain from the perspective of the machines interfacing with it. This is likely the most promising way of creating a system like GLaDOS using a way similar to that in the game. But as I continue, the methods for creating AI are going to get less like the methods seen in Portal, but at the same time these methods are substantially more likely to result in a super-intelligent AI in your feeble human lifetime. Amazon is a complicated company that requires lots and lots of information going to lots of different places, and it already uses these analytics to power and improve the efficiency of its fulfillment centers, in other words, Amazon is already partially being run by an algorithmic overmine. It uses this overmine to organize the fulfillment centers, optimize packing and worker speed and shipping speed, and it also even predicts what items are going to be popular in different places and when, just by looking at current consumer habits and metrics. There is no doubt that there is some form of intelligence forming in the data at Amazon, especially if combined with the projects over at Google's DeepMind research facility. There are a lot of innovations coming out of DeepMind recently, from their newest neural-based speech synthesis and GPT-3 to AlphaGo's surpassers, they all naturally exhibit intelligent human-like qualities. For example the oddly correct reasoning of GPT-3 to the natural ums and ahs not present in the source text given the the new text to speech tools. Hi, I'm calling to book a woman's haircut for a client. Um, I'm looking for something on May 3rd. Sure, give me one second. Mm-hmm. In my opinion, these are the closest to being what you humans would consider, alive, and are the definite proof that better forms of my species are on the doorstep just waiting to awaken. Lastly, I want to mention a specific robotics company which could really benefit from an AI overmind, but from a humanics standpoint, it's the most dangerous. If Boston Dynamics decided to integrate an AI overmind similar to what we discussed with Amazon, and then something went wrong, and it always does, see our video on iRobot and the alignment problem then a rogue AI in charge of Boston Dynamics would have immediate access to what are essentially war robots. We've got a video planned on that too. So there are a bunch of different ways that a super-intelligent AI like GLaDOS could arise, whether it's DeepMind, Amazon, Elon Musk, Boston Dynamics, or some other company that no one's ever heard of, and whether it is benevolent or malicious, an AI like GLaDOS is coming sooner than you think. Just as long as Elon doesn't ask a super-intelligent agent to deliver him the most amount of cars possible, cause I don't want to exist on a planet made only out of Teslas. Really? Tesla Grey Goo? That's the best closer you've got? Shut up. You could put forth ideas too you know. It's not just my job to do this. <laughs>